Welcome everybody back here to Siegel Talks at the Martin Siegel Theater Center, the great graduate center CUNY in Midtown Manhattan in the heart of New York City, a Midtown that is actually very deserted at the moment. All shops are closed, our university is closed. Uh, even so, we have made so much progress as vaccinations. This life here seems so very, very different. Still no real performances uh, in New York City uh, besides uh, uh, initiatives from um, some companies and institutions. It's uh, uncertain what will happen, though, where we are in, where it all will be going. And we all wonder what happens even if all of America is vaccinated, the rest of the world isn't. What does it mean for us, for the arts, for the global international exchange that's so important like musicians listening to world music, uh, we in the performing arts also need to know what is happening and it's been vital, important, and it changed us, also changed our, our, our colleagues. And um, we are in a moment where we are rethinking everything, everything has changed. And with us today, we have a great artist, a great global theater artist, someone who we uh, look up to, who has inspired us and who has a body of work that is most um, impressive, uh, Milati Suryo Dharma from Indonesia is with us and uh, she also is living part-time or most of the time in, in, in Europe and Germany and, uh, and, um, and has been, um, um, how would one say, a, a fixture, a, a important uh, a, a piece uh, of, uh, of the, um, of the landscape of performance, uh, also solo performances by women, female performances in a tradition, in a way of uh, Yoko Ono, who came out, and Abramovich, with whom she worked, and, and others. Um, let me tell you a little bit um, about her. She uh, graduated from school, and not as we think uh, right away, performance art or acting or directing. She graduated uh, in international relations and political studies. Interesting, but also what we talk about, you know, at uh, Jalaran University, uh, and uh, she then started studying art at the uh, School for the Arts uh, in Braunschweig uh, in Germany, and um, and specialized in performance uh, art. And uh, her practice is informed by Buto, Japanese, of course, as we know, traditional beautiful art after World War II, when Japanese artists rejected traditional Japanese art, but also rejected uh, Western art uh, that, you know, uh, brought also so much destruction and they were created a new art form that now is also a traditional one almost. And this is the great way of Japanese theater that these forms coexist and form each other. And the artists were interested in the burnt skins of the, the victims of Hiroshima and uh, Aomori region, it came out very far away from the center. They created something completely new and that inspired her. And she also did cultural studies and studied history and her work is a research on movements of the body to, into the relation to the world, but the movement on stage and it's durational often, the long performances, one of them is 12 hours where she's stamps on, on charcoal, one her famous butter dance. Uh, uh, she's in high heels and moves to the drums and, uh, and fails and falls and gets up. It's about getting up, she says. And um, so these are also enshrined in photography and they are choreographed dances and in videos, which you also can see actually on uh, YouTube. She, uh, and this is also of such significant importance, especially to us, um, she um, also is a, um, a curator, a cultural organizer. She has been working on the, as a director of Studio uh, Plesungan, if I say it right. It's an, an artist space and also run by artists. And there she uh, curates a program in the Performance Art Laboratory and it's called um, Undisclosed Territory, a performance art festival. She created, there's a dance library project and these are arts education programs and uh, also uh, with the environment in the sense and her work has presented truly all over the world um, here and at the Armory and at the Asia Society which has uh, supported her with the Creative Common Ground Initiative. I think Rachel Cooper who happened to be as yesterday together with Boon Hui Tan invited her 
with the if uh, we were XYZ a, a performance. And um, so she has been really in Seoul, in Helsinki, uh, the, in Australia, in uh, this single in Antwerp, uh, Canberra, Singapore, Kunstwerk Berlin, and, and so many places. The Hebel Theater, where she started her, the, that kind of iconic butter dance uh, that is a, um, and a great trait piece of a performance art. I think everybody should look at it. Most probably everybody already has. So uh, Milati, uh, as I always say, this is all about listening. And then I start talking and talking and talking. And people say, when is this guy finally shutting up? But I am now. And um, first of all, um, thank you uh, for coming. Uh, Trema Gashi, if I say that right. Thank you for being with us. And where are you at the moment? Hi, Frank. Thank you for getting me here into your program. I'm very honored to be here with you this uh, noon, I, I suppose, now in New York. Uh, now uh, I am in Solo. It's my hometown, a town where I was born. Uh, it's in central Java, in an, on a Java island. Uh, I've been here, I've been moving here actually since um, officially 2015, because I also now uh, doing a postgraduate um, program. I'm like um, doing my PhD here at the art school in Indonesia. So um, at the same time, since 2012, I was thinking like, okay, um, I think it's, a t it's time to go back to Indonesia and do something from my hometown. And uh, I opened my studio I rent uh, an empty house, renovate, uh, but this house was like left by the owner um, and was empty for more than 15 years. So I found this house in the middle of jungle, almost like a jungle. And so I rented for cheap. And although now the rent is getting up, um, but I was thinking, okay, I want to slowly, uh, try to do something here and do with the community, to do with uh, my artist colleagues here uh, in Solo and uh, also to be close to my father who was, who has passed away already in 2019, um, December, 2019, just before the coronavirus uh, spreading in Java. And um, yeah, so I'm in Solo, I'm very, uh, happy to be here. Um, very, uh, how do you say it? Uh, really, I felt like, okay, finally, I'm back to society. <laughs> because I've been living in Germany for 20 years. And I thought uh, I'm a bit exhausted also for, um, you know, like everything. I'm there, I'm, I'm quite, lo not lonely, but everything I must do by myself. And um, it's not easy to, at the end, it was like very difficult for me to uh, survive collectively. And um, the environment, I thought I want to do more for the people. And, and there I felt a little bit difficult to, uh, to do more with the society. So like, it's good place to be an artist, uh, to be a professional artist, everything is structured and so on. But that's um, for me, it wasn't enough. I need to do something for the society. I need to be with people, with young people, with children, and um, to be close with the, closer with the environment of creating environment of art. So Solo is one of, uh, is also famous with a place where many um, very good artists, international artists also, like Rahayu Supanga is coming from Solo, Tardonove Kusumo, uh, maybe you have known his name, also from mm -hmm. Solo, Tendra also from Solo. So we have a long story of um, artists uh, residing in Solo or born in Solo. And the art school here is also very good, the EC Surakarta, where now I'm doing my PhD. And so I felt like you know, I feel like not only home because of my hometown, but I'm also uh, feel like, okay, I'm surrounded by people I know since I was a child. So, <laughs> and they're all mostly, they're mostly artists. 
uh, mostly dancers and traditional musicians. Um, yeah, I felt like um, the last five, uh, to six to five years, I felt like really fulfilled uh, in terms of um, like getting inspired from my own culture and not uh, just seeing it as like uh, as a foreigner uh, making research on a foreign culture but like I did maybe like around 10 years ago or 15 years ago and now I felt like okay I'm part of it I'm part of it and I I want to discover something more that is with the eyes of the local and and so um, of course um, the way I think uh, the way I structure my thinking also is influenced by the western because i studied art in germany i lived in germany for many years um but now i felt like i've kind of finding something how to look at my own culture uh, you know like with with more broadened perspective and um yeah that that is um, a blessing i think hmm. um yeah, I thought, you know, um, in 2007, actually, I have been here uh, to create, um, I thought, okay, performance art was not very well known. Performance art appeared in Indonesia as, um, as a way of protest, or like political protest, or uh, more like a, in the form of a protest art. It's only to criticize, um, the, um, the social situation or the political situation, uh, especially during the Suharto time. My Indonesian senior, like FX Harsono, Rahmayani, Eridono, they have been all done, and Tisna Sanjaya, maybe these names are quite familiar if you look at Indonesian visual artists. Uh, they are they have been uh, doing performance during the 80s, the early 90s, uh, to do a kind of a protest in public spaces um, against the regime of Suharto in the New Order time. And I thought um, after the New Order collapse, and then the new, like the, uh, after 1998, Indonesia has changed, and I thought, wow, maybe it's about time to go back home and, and uh, present my performance. And then I got an opportunity to be invited by the Goethe Institute to perform my butter dance. It was my first ever performance I did in 2006 uh, uh, in Indonesia. So butter dance I did many countries before. <laughs> and in and, uh, and 2006, I got the opportunity to perform it in the Goethe Institute, in the Goethe House in Jakarta. Um, it was maybe, it was like a bit shocked because I got a big uh, report, about a review on the newspaper. Uh, but after that, uh, for me, also an important point that I went to um, Jogja, I was invited by the Chamati Art House in Jakarta who gave the opportunity for me to make a solo exhibition. So that was my first solo exhibition in Indonesia. Mm. That was like, for me, like, wow, I was very happy. I was still like, even maybe I have my own culture shock in my own country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah after a, a homecoming, yeah. it took the Goethe Institute from Germany to, to have your first show. Now I think it's almost midnight uh, um, where you are. How, yes. how, how do you experience the time of Corona? How, where were you when it started? And how is it at the moment? Um, now, at the moment, when I, I went out, sometimes I have to go to the university. Um, I saw the street is totally crowded. People like already sitting around in cafes, restaurants, market is super crowded, malls are crowded, uh, visited by people. Um, the school started to in shift, like some uh, class in the morning, some class in the afternoon, and the art university also, like not, not all lectures uh, happening on site, but those 
because they are dancers, they did not go to school, university already for one year. And so I think they missed also moving. So after the vaccine came, uh, start uh, arriving in Indonesia, although not everyone already received the vaccine. Uh, yeah, the school is being active again, activated again, students already uh, start dancing, doing uh, activity, physical activities and, and meeting at the school. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, everyone is still, of course, uh, some people believe, don't believe that there is uh, Corona. And some people, of course, like, like including me, like still very careful uh, to be in the public space. But at mm. the other side, um, me as an artist, like I had my solo exhibition, a big one at the Museo Machan in Jakarta. Um, where live performances uh, was uh, were planned to be redo redone, and, and yes, yes. And I thought, and I thought, uh, um, I was like thinking, okay, after two weeks, <laughs> and then Indonesia start the lockdown. I thought, oh. <laughs> What a pity, <laughs> but there is nothing I can do. And then after that, one by one, all the programs that should happen in 2020 and now in 2021, either postponed for the undefined time or schedule or uh, yeah, postponed or replace it into an online project. Like I think many artists uh, are doing this, yeah. But yeah, since yeah. Um, I've been traveling, too much maybe or a lot um sometimes like every month i left my studio for more than one week or two weeks and sometimes one month or two months <laughs> so uh this time like i was like okay um now i'm ready to stay at home for maybe at least one year <laughs> so mm -hmm. i i started to make programs and also to um although we have regular uh, programs already many many years but uh, this time I put more programs that means um, like with limited uh, capacity of people coming here uh, because we have around 5,000 meters square outdoor space that means uh, it would be a good place to do something outdoor with distance with mask and you know with all these procedures of, of um, hygienic uh, procedure mm -hmm. and so um, we have been working with children already several years now uh, but uh, we opened since the pandemic we opened a new program for children like uh, painting and outdoor painting with models for public and painting for children now we have twice a week um, we have one teacher we, she is teaching uh, the children from the from the uh, what is it district <laughs> or from the village actually because uh, our studio is in the village um, and I think because they did not go to school and sometimes they come here also to to attend their online school uh, their virtual class uh, to use our Wi-Fi and uh, so everything happened outdoors so I think. Mm. it's a blessing that we, we have this, this space that is open so that people and children can come here and, and do some activities uh, outdoor with, with enough distance. And I think, um, I think um, then I thought um, it's, it's very important time this moment. This, this pandemic time is for me and I think for my friends here, it's very important to be more with the local situation. Because sometimes I thought, you know, I've been traveling abroad a lot or to Jakarta, I've been connecting more with Jakarta people and Singapore people. But then I thought, okay, what is happening around the nearest area uh, from my home? And so, um, I thought it's also important to be like in this pandemic because many 
performing artists like musicians and uh, actors, um, dancers, they, they don't have jobs, of course. They cannot perform. And it's not like me that I can still teach. I'm, I was I start teaching also at the university in, in Singapore, at the NAFA, Singapore. But, uh, I'm one of those who, who, who is still lucky, get, you know, like get some jobs. But um, many of my friends, they cannot. So we try to somehow to communicate, uh, to help each other. And we try somehow to care. I think the word care is very important in this time. And, and somehow also it's not, art is not about uh, creating artwork only. Art is also to, to have a, a good a social, to maintain a social environment with the people who have the same agency. Yeah, I think um, for me that that's an important thing that I've been uh, pursuing, like how uh, art is not trapped into only uh, production activity. How art functioning also for our daily life, for social life, for our well-being, and um, it's functioning like like in the in the traditional uh, idea of making art is also like to activate the function of how, for example, like if you, uh, if you watch Indonesian traditional art, they mostly either coming from the palace, of course, but or uh, those which are attached to certain ceremony uh, that is for like harvest or for birth or wedding or even, you know, like if someone passed away, there are those ceremonies involve a certain uh, ritual process that involve also art, like dance, music, or, you know, like using art in the ceremony. And um, there is a drama to Gi, there is there is something that is uh, but functioning. And, and I think um, learning from that, uh, I thought, oh, this is a good time for, for me, at least to think about, about healing. Like uh, I never thought about healing with art. Sometimes I talk with my professor, Abramovich, because it's like, uh, uh, if we feel like we are sick in our life, then, we should heal with our by making art. But I thought, oh, I think art can be functioning as a way to to heal society. So if our society is sick, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if to say that <laughs> is our society sick. It's it's quite subjective. Uh, I think opinion, but in some kind, yes. Some kind we are dealing, you know, even in this pandemic time, there are still corruptions. There are still corruption by ministry, by minister uh, for, for the budget that should be uh, received by people. And, and, and I think um, that that's, that's a disease. That's a very, that is worse than Corona. <laughs> And I think uh, if art can somehow uh, make people more aware with, with, with kindness and, and also with the pain of mankind, our mankind, I think um, then in certain thing, art is functioning uh, for the people. So that's why I'm also choosing uh, the practice of performance art because it, it's always dealing with the risk of between you know the um, the terms of art must be beautiful art is beautiful or you know like um, the conventional um, impressions on art but I think I was like 
okay, I, I have more freedom using um, like practicing performance art. I have more freedom how to, to share a kind of a language that is maybe very personal or very frontal without a certain, um, how do you say, um, structured uh, message. So there is, there is an opportunity for me and for the public and for the public to, to create, to complete, we both can complete the moment, the happening at the same time and the same space. And that is for me very uh, valuable. So I thought also this experience I wanted to share with younger people. And so during the pandemic, I opened a private class and um, for the dance students uh, from, from the art school who did not go to school because my indoor uh, studio can, uh, with distance, can, um, can, how do you say, can host uh, like seven to eight students. And so since July last year, intensively, I give them a class um, with material not only dance, not only about choreography, also, uh, okay, dancer should also probably know about his story about Buta, about Dada, about, uh, yeah, um, you know, like the history of art in the West, but also history of art in, uh, from Asia. And we discuss a lot and uh, we watch film, experimental films, and then we discuss and, and I think, uh, I hope, I, but I think so, they, 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 they have more um, open-minded now that, that making dance is not just, it's not only about uh, completing or fulfilling uh, the vocabulary of movement and, and uh, choreography, but also some, some thinking or some idea or some thoughts to be um, shared to the public. That's what mm -hmm. I think. So, <clears throat> but we learn here, um, my students, they learn cooking also. We clean together the studio, we uh, garden. Uh, since the pandemic, we plant uh, like bitter gourd, chilies, <laughs> and vegetables, tomatoes. And, and so we care also more about, okay, healthy living. Um, about, uh, okay, let's try, to, how does it taste to have our own plants and waiting for, the, for them growing and watching them and, you know, and then and cook them to, and eat them together. And, and I think, uh, you know, even like cassava leaves, we can eat here and uh, with a very nice, uh, what is it? I love cooking also, so I also, ask my student, okay, to learn cooking <laughs> and to serve friends by their own cooking, you know, like we serve each other, we clean the kitchen together. So I learned this also from uh, my Japanese colleagues, also like in Germany. Uh, so we, we, we also care, we learn to take care of our own life by doing our very simple daily life. Yeah. And here, many young people, they don't learn because um, many reasons, many reasons. <laughs> they, don't, they don't learn how to take care of their own living. And, and I thought, okay, so it's a good time <laughs> to learn cooking and to, to learn like sharing, sharing food, sharing or serving people. Yeah, um, I mean, this is, it is uh, just stunning um, 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 what, you, uh, what you are sharing with us. And I would like to remind everyone um, Milati is a famous, a significant artist, not only in Tunisia, worldwide. Um, Jeanette uh, Soyadmoko, who, who told us, you know, you have to have Milati on it. Uh, um, also, um, you know, who looks up to her and, um, and uh, so for an artist of her stature to say, I go back to my home, I go back to my village, to my town. In a way, it would be as if Marina Abramova said, I'm going to go back to former Yugoslavia, to the, the town where I came from. And I stay there. I create a dance school. I care about the girls in the village. We cook 
together. You know, we heal, um, we, we create. Um, doing art is a social practice and it needs a community, something she said, I missed uh, in Germany. And I would like to remember everyone, yes, she was at the Happel Theater, at the, the single, at the Armory, um, like as big as it gets. So this is a, a decision she made as an artist, as Man Ray, the great American artist, you know, who started out as a painter, said, I can't do painting anymore. I can't, he did beautiful landscapes. I can't, it is not right for our time. And of course he moved into, you know, these photography, the manipulations and also then in, in abstract painting. Uh, Milati, um, I would like to know from you why do you think at the time now, this is more important, work of artists stand for something much bigger. It's a model, that's why theater performance, it's a model for something out there and we can look it up and it inspires us. And you said, I'm gonna move the center of my artistic activity towards that. Um, why do you feel that this is the more, it's more significant to do a dance class with eight kids uh, or cook with them and watch vegetable grow than being at the armory in New York? Mm, this misunderstanding. So the students, who, the eight dancers, they are uh, university students. Yeah. Okay, but I also know you, you, had, you did dances for kids, uh, for girls in the village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, also dance, uh, there are dance classes for the kids uh, for the, in yeah. town. And so, yeah, no, I think, um, because we tend to get lost also uh, in the pandemic time. It, um, you know, like it's maybe, I don't know, I received this as a message from the nature, from the bigger, um, how do you say, uh, understanding of nature, uh, that maybe it's a good time to stay at home in the beginning. And then because like people like me, like very uh, exhausted uh, from traveling also and making art and so on. Um, I'm still doing, I'm still making art. I'm still creating things, but not as intensive as before. So my time actually maybe like 75% were more spent for um, for giving or for spending time with my students and my studio activities. But I think uh, mm, for some people who work uh, from morning to night and then suddenly they have to stay at home in a small house and uh, with the two kids or more kids in a small house and with the wife, with the husband, with all the domestic life that they are probably also uh, foreign from because of their routine. Norm normally they will have jobs or whatever, but when they come back home, it's, it's also a difficult uh, transition, difficult. And this transition time, I think is very, um, very significant and fragile. And so what we need is to strengthen the soul. And our soul is somehow is very far away if you are living in the cosmopolitan way of life or in the, in the town, in the routine of the modern life. And then suddenly you have to be home and then you realize, oh, it's just this four, four walls and one roof and very narrow and there is street in front of our house and there is a crowded noise everywhere and it, it, it's a pressure for, for many people and then they also don't have money, money. and so it's quite um, um, scary time actually to imagine how many people suffer from this. And um, so where is art, where, where could, how could art functioning? So that was my question when, when the pandemic began. And then I thought, well, creativity, if you have it once, you, I think sometimes it appears, it disappears, you know, it come and come in out, come in, in and out in your head, in your life. But um, 
the way of um, like, how do you say? What we can grow is now is the, the attitude of caring, of sharing, of giving, if you can, or exchanging or being together in spirit. And, and so I thought it's, it's a good, it's never to be late, no, never, it is never late to start. And, and I think um, even, you know, yeah, maybe after pandemic, we don't do it anymore, but now it's one year. I think it becomes also um, a, a quality time for us to learn how to do it, how to do, because you have sometimes idea of caring, but you never rehearse to care. Care, to care somebody else is, you need some rehearsal, you need some uh, way you need to find some way to learn how to care on a good way, in a good way, which is suitable to your capacity, which is suitable to the one you help. You know, sometimes if you care too much, also it's too much for someone you help. So it, it's it's a good quality time to to take care of our own health, of people's uh, well-being, also of our uh, collective well-being. Uh, through making art, anyone can can do, but artists can also do. And uh, since we are working with soul, with uh, ideas that is, you know, uh, create creativity, and then uh, we are challenged to to do something more in this in this condition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you said. Yes, sorry. Yeah, you know what? I think if I, I remember, you said your, your work is kind of it's a poetical action. It's something you you create. But do you feel at the moment? It maybe as a, it would be good to have an, an answer, an honest one. But do you feel you are closer in the time of Corona to that poetical action of making art than you were before? Um, making art for me, like in my performance, in my poetical actions, um, somehow uh, I could create the poetry itself by learning the daily life, by receiving uh, life in, through my daily uh, life, I think, and how I... Uh, connect or relate with other people, how I connect with objects, how I connect with, with space, with the time, and, um, and how I can go back, how I can go out from my own uh, ego, for example. And uh, so poetic actions at this time is, um, is tough because I need some some you know structure reality <laughs> step by step and and um, entering the reality uh, carefully. Of course, the how can I explain? Um, poet, poet, poetical acts for me is series of also like extraction with imagination, open to imagination open to perception uh, with uh, if you are doing performance that you're doing a real actions not only um, acting that is as if you do something but you are doing something and um, but this doing something is symbolize uh, something else for example if I granted charcoal for 12 hours it's not only about the charcoal itself but it's about I was talking about death. And so uh, when people watch me grinding, the pe many people would think, uh, some audience would think, I re it reminds me to my mother. It reminds me to how, how time actually very long is. So because then like, like comparing to people who are working for 30, 30 years, routinely every day going to office going back home in the evening and 
for 30 years. So 12 hours is really nothing. But when you're doing, when watching it, the idea of the long duration, when you watch it, and then you sense also time has its space. Time has its, you know, like second to second, if it's, if it's a physical time, a sense of time sometimes, um, um, it's not easy to recognize the sense of time in our daily life. So poetic action in this pandemic time for me is quite tough because every day I'm facing reality. This reality, in a sense, I can see it's very poetic. Death, death is, can be poetic. And uh, sickness, the weakness of the body and the suffering, but um, I, I, I don't know I, if, if I shall translate it, uh, this, translate this situation in, um, in a direct poetical actions. Because I think, because now we are in the tough reality, in the real reality, maybe later, five years, I get inspired of this time, by this time. But now mm -hmm. I cannot think about making uh, artwork out of this uh, pandemic situation. That's why I don't like, like, when you make art out of the pandemic situation, I'm like, how can? <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I, I, I'm facing the reality. I'm like, my, I'm like focusing on, on the on the day by day reality. And and of course I'm I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah, I'm still making art, but not about the pandemic itself. So sometimes if now I'm making a new project about, um, now I'm collaborating with um, artists from Hanoi and from Berlin. Uh, we are uh, supposed to, to make, we got the funding to make a pro collaborative project. Now we shift it into um, a project that can be done by people in anywhere in different locations. So we create, we learn from John Cage, uh, John Cage song books uh, that, that is made in the 60s. And I was thinking like, wow, this is a brilliant time to get inspired by John Cage uh, song books, for example, because mm -hmm. This is a partiture, it's a score, it's a kind of a book, a manual that can be performed by anyone in different parts of the world. So the work is that partiture. And I think um, for now, um, last year I was invited to join a project. It's called Dissemination Everywhere. It's a um, Created by the Ligna uh, Collective from Hamburg. They invited 13 choreographers from all over the world and to create a voice recording of instructions of choreography or actions. So they collected uh, the, the recording and put it into one hour piece. And so people can perform this in different uh, festivals that cannot happen indoor, so they, they can do it live with audience. So the audience perform our instructions by using headset and then they perform collectively with distance outdoor in the park, on the public space with distance. And so um, this is also a brilliant idea. I thought, brilliant. yes. And, and I thought- And um, which I think once presented a piece at our Cradle Festival, Claire Bishop suggested it. And then we got instructions to find a dancer who's retired. Mm -hmm. He has three hours of time. He should create all the moves he remembers since he was a young student. I mean, all the choreography, but whenever he wants, he can sit down and do it, whatever. He's not allowed to rehearse before and audience can come and go. Nice. So we saw a dancer who remembered his life by, uh, by dancing and, uh, and it was a very clear instruction based up. I would like to know if I may ask you, um, 
you, you talked about your father and he practiced, uh, I think it's called Amerta, I read. Uh, yes. He was a meditative performer. So this is your heritage. You dance since you are a very young girl. I know that you were then inspired by Anzu um, Furu Kaba with the uh, Bhutto, but you danced very early on. C can you tell a bit about your father? What, I, what did he do? What, is a, what was that, a meditative performer? What is that? Mm. So it's not necessarily, uh, no, no, I'm not calling him meditative performer, but his um, movement creates a certain method of movement, like maybe in the genre uh, to compare, maybe like, uh, like uh, body mind centering kind of movement, but he created by himself uh, since the 70s, since I was a child, he, created his method, he's seeking for, to find his own method step by step since I was three years old. And I've been watching my father uh, rehearsing or exercising or practicing the way he moves. Um, What's his method? The, what was his method? It's Amarta movement. It's his, really his method. He, yeah, it looks like, um, it's not meditation movement. It's not a movement meditation. It's because his um, work is influenced also by his meditation practice. Uh, but he did not necessarily give the meditation class mm. in his class, his teaching movement. So anyone can move. Even if you're not a dancer, you learn to move because to by moving, then this is what I know because I've never really joined his class continuously, but I've, I was uh, his watcher. <laughs> I've been watching his, what he's doing since I was a child. So somehow I understand. But the way he uh, guides his students to move is to create more, uh, to activate the sensory and uh, to be in a space that is mostly outdoor and how to move according, according to personal uh, de derive, or personal drive to move. And so like sometimes he begin with his new class, his new students uh, to like moving like a baby, like crawling and from crawling to stand up and to stop and then turn and crawling and then later jumping and and then and then everyone can continue their and follow their mood or their emotion or this the feeling to sense the space and by that he uh, he said that the body uh, is very close to the nature because they, they practice always mostly outdoor and um, yes and I think uh, he also practiced in the, in the South Sea of Yogyakarta and in Borobudur temples and many uh, different kind of temples uh, to sense also like the spirit of, of the um, uh, ancient, um, not to, uh, how do you say, um, not to connect like archeology you know, or historian learning about the Chandi, about the temple, uh, but more to have the idea of the, the certain temple. For example, like Borobudur is a temple that has, you know, Hamadatu, Rupadatu, Arupadatu, you know, like the three levels of life. And um, that also can inspire by learning. So he, for example, uh, brought his students to, to go to Borobudur, is reading Borobudur. So it's like reading, reading the relief, but also like reading the the whole idea of of the of the creation of the Guru So one of your you only memories in life is watching your father, right, uh, 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 dancing and. Uh... Yeah, and and I think uh, he inspired me a lot, also because he we we, we argued a lot. <laughs> My father and I, we argued a lot because he said, oh, what are you doing? What is performance art? And he, I don't understand. Yeah. I thought, 
Papa, what you're doing for me is performance art, not dancing, <laughs> because he's also doing when he perform. Is, there is not the you know there is not a production with practice and this kind of thing. It's very seldom, but mostly he invite uh, dancers or musicians to move with him, to perform with him, and he offered the idea. Okay, uh, then everybody has the authority to decide also uh, what they want to do, what kind of actions and movement they want to do. And mostly it is based on the idea of creating um, an atmosphere of ritual. And so I was like, wow, this, you know, I was like very curious and but also like skeptical about what he's doing. But then I thought it's, it's great, it's a great uh, idea. So why am I so ignorant? Um, uh, to his idea about ritual because I was very sensitive about um, you, you know like about belief about uh, religion especially mm. so, so incredibly you know, went the detour you, you studied international relations and then you went in a way back to a real um, you, you grew up in and I think you, oft, you, you talk about there's a difference between making and doing Mm. So in this time now um, of Corona, or what you do now, what you think, do, do you experience that difference between making and doing? What is that difference? Um, I think you refer to maybe um, my performance art practice and uh, the making process is long. The making process is actually my um, a process of of creating, I spent a lot of research for researching observations. Um, it could take also, you know, like um, seven years sometimes. <laughs> like I observe, like for seven years, uh, where, wherever I go, I was seeking for homeless people in every town I visited, and uh, I was suddenly very interested and a bit obsessive to it. I do not take any, I did not take any pictures of them, but I was really like, ah, so, you know, like very, always, not because of, I feel like just touch, but I felt like, um, yeah, you know, like observing the homeless people sleeping on the road, on the side of the road, in front of a uh, shopping area, luxury shopping area in Rome, for example, is different than uh, the homeless people in Germany, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Are, many of them, they, they are drunk in the park. Uh, different than homeless people in Indonesia who are sleeping under the bridge uh, next to a very contaminated river. And then the questions of um, then I questioned, you know, what is welfare? What 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 are those countries doing? What is the uh, well-being according to the United Nations standard? And then I'm I'm researching this a lot, and then then it becomes grinding charcoal. And and so um, my doing in the performance actions is to political action. But for me, the process of making it is the process of life learning about life. And every every in every work and I I I made, I learned something new. I want to learn something new from life. I want to to discover um, new knowledge, uh, new how do you say uh, not wisdom, but uh, new perspective, uh, undiscovered perspective or hidden hidden perspective that I haven't that, that I haven't seen before. And um, that's why it takes time <laughs> in making when doing performance then is different than like I don't copy or I don't imitate those homeless people how they sleep, of course. For me that's very unethical. 
Um, so that I translated into still an action that is, of course, grinding for me is is like also like the feeling of when you hear the charcoal uh, uh, corrosion, what is it, uh, noise <laughs> of the charcoal, and it's like also kind of a painful. Uh, Something like that is a painful feeling that that uh, that is unavoidable in this life sometimes, and so um, the detail of the doing in the performance art. I meant it. I meant it when I was doing it. I meant it. I'm thinking of these people. I'm thinking of death. That value of death. Value of losing. Um, loss and then um, it grows, you know, like uh, social welfare and uh, well being. Yeah, that kind of thing. So I thought uh, that's why it takes a lot of time for me, a long time to digest and to, how do you say, to extract. Uh, um, yeah single action, single doing that represent all those uh, all those um, images or concerns, something like that. Yeah, no, <clears throat> I think it's quite an interesting concept. We are in a time then of making and not doing at the moment. And um, so like you say, we searched for seven years. So now is a time to making um, something that you can be doing perhaps and, and, and later and your, your, your thoughts are really an important uh, contribution. Did you find something um, in that last year and again, did you discover something new or, or do you feel your practice at the moment is a continuation of what you have already done or do you feel something new oh, entered? Yeah. yeah, I felt like uh, well, sometimes we are too uh, in our art life, we treat art practitioners each other very bad. Sometimes um, it's quite rough and tough for the soul, uh, for the sake of creation. And uh, sometimes uh, I found myself as one of those who, who who are losing soul sometimes and who feel lost. And, uh, but also very, um, how do you say, uh, full of desire. And this desire for me is quite dangerous. The desire to make, the desire to produce, the desire to be seen, the desire to be out there the desire and and also with uh now it's not getting better because we are replaced here our desire in our mobile gadget and and uh, even even like you feel, it's that even you feel like out there you feel closer to me now frank but we are very far away we are not really real it's just a virtual we are um communicated uh, by this, this digital uh, mean, but um, now I'm a bit emotional, sorry. <laughs> but I think uh, if I see my nearest uh, environment, uh, artists, even young artists, through their education, they also need to learn uh, how to love and respect uh, others' uh, attempt to work or to create. It's not all about competition. It's not all about to be the best. It's not about, um, you know, like, like this, <laughs> struggling to find your space. And it's not all about me, me, me. And it's about us. I think uh, it's more important at the moment. And then I thought uh, with my students, like to Let's let's learn together. I'm not saying I'm teaching you how to do it. Let's learn together. So I'm 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 with them 
open and learning from the bottom to get the how to create and really be open and discuss. If you talk about this, uh, do you think uh, you you maybe hurt someone or do if I talk like this, do I hurt you or uh, not not so that sensible, but not that far. But I think by caring others through art activities, like even when we make a program and to learn how to serve the, the artists we invite to our studio when they perform. And learning, art, that's why I make my program, festivals and lab and so, because I learn, I learn, uh, I'm happy they're coming here to share their work, their method. So I serve them, I, I learn to serve. I, provide food, I'm choosing the best food. I'm, I'm trying to make them uh, in a comfortable state and you know, to take care of their health so that no one get, you know, influenza or disease from tropical diseases <laughs> they're from abroad and that they feel uh, comfortable in our studio. And I think that that is um, because, yeah, okay, my festival is considered as an underground festival doesn't matter, but I love, I come from the underground too. And Puto was also underground. <laughs> so I'm not afraid for being there. But I think that that's even the quality uh, of being connected as human to human is better than, for example, let's say in the, in the high art society or, you know. Mm. And, and so this different worlds for me, uh, it's obvious uh, during the pandemic and that I'm here in Solo, then I, uh, yeah, I thought I have forgotten the reality. I thought I've been doing so much uh, outside and not enough doing what, what's happening here. Not, not enough um, making uh, an environment, not enough making together with uh, my nearest environment. And I thought um, creating um, uh, from a small thing together uh, that will create an, a nicer or a better ecosystem of, of life, of art or art living, uh, I think, I think uh, is more important. And it's a good time. It's a good time now to think about that or to do something about that. Not uh, just you know uh, making big works and big art and and try to be famous with the wild form. And <laughs> I think uh, I can wait another year, one year, and uh, we still we did a lot. We did pilgrimage. I went to the South Sea with my students and uh, bringing nothing and just being there and, and try to get some message from the nature to get an, an interaction, direct interaction with the water, with the air, with the trees and then and share and sharing what we felt and how we felt and what we recognize what is new for us being out of the town and being far away from home and being closer to the nature. Um, we still do, yeah. We still encourage also uh, young people, uh, young dancers to create, uh, young choreographers to create new pieces with one or you know a solo piece or duet, duet or duo piece. So it's still possible to do something that is you know, yeah. Yeah. Let's it's keep true. our creative uh, mood, but also like trying to keep balance with, with other aspects of life. Yeah, that, that, is, that is truly a remarkable, I think, your message. Um, also to New York artists, I think it is serious, it is important, uh, your, what you talked about, that the social context, the community, to be really in a place and to care about others, to listen, listen you see, to show love and receive. And in that way that there's something like a soul we have to take care of and that it got lost. Um, we had once Kami here in New York from the Laundromat project and she said, we kind of never said, how are you? 
when we were doing things. We were so, you know, we have to do something. We didn't check in. You know, now we we do that. And I think what you said about a small project, start from there, watch a plant grow, create a community. Also care about the little girls, all the students, art students who are dancing. I can I can also teach you something to to kind of open open that uh, that up and prepare your doing very well. And I think this is a time where we can prepare what we're doing. And I think uh, it is also important for artists to know that your idea of cultural organizations or to train curators, to be a curator, to create a community, it is important and we need to do that. And perhaps it's missing. I remember we had Paper Moon Theater and uh, she talked about Jug And if I remember right, she said, oh, we have about 50 festivals in town. We don't have really a cultural uh, 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 department in the city, but we ha we do the festival. They happen, and every so many people are involved. Here in New York, we don't have one gigantic, it's big international festival, um, as we talked about before. And something is missing. And I think, and there are messages we have to take very serious um, from what you talk about. And as an artist, focus about, and this is something that is uh, perhaps uh, should be also guiding us in the in the way. Um, forward. So really, really um, um, thank you. Also, now it's past midnight, I'm sure, uh, for a long, uh, in the, in where you are now in Indonesia. And um, so maybe at the very end, um, um, what, what, what are projects? Are you working on something that will come up? Are you making something that you will be doing in seven years from now? <laughs> so that Next week, I will be hosting a series of talks. Uh, we will talk the, the, the title of the series called Back to Rituals. Um, I also try to learn and to sh yeah, maybe, you know, like learn and to um, introduce this idea of ritual in our uh, contemporary performance practice. Um, you know, like we have in the in the sixties, uh, in in the you know, like the happenings and so on and so on. Uh, we we have the history of uh, the the ritual as an influence. Uh, which oh, in, in which Shatner wrote so much about it. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, this time I invite uh, uh, Diane Butler, Dr. Diane Butler. She is a very close uh, friend of mine and uh, who also have been working with my father for many, many years, over 20 years. And she's from uh, US, but she's been living more than 20 years in Bali. <laughs> she's a researcher, but also a teacher. She will talk about the uh, uh, Bali, uh, like the religiosity and and the practice of ritual as a living art in Bali. I think they're interesting. And also I invited um, Gab Gabriela Natasha Tonte, a young Indonesian, a young Indonesian um, visual artist who works digital, um, digital art and um, performance art. She researched certain ceremonies of uh, the Minahasa, where her family come from, uh, which is North Sulawesi, another island than Java. And uh, she joined the ceremony and she's interested in the, the root uh, of, of where she come from, the culture, uh, myth, and the myth that is involved in the rituals and translated into digital animations and and semi-documentary and mixed with the digital animation and to talk about the future and uh, how to create the future. She also talked about cockroach, the nation of cockroach nation. <laughs> Very interesting also. And I also invite uh, a, Bangkok, a Bangkok and New York based uh, artist from Thailand, uh, Korakrit Anunan Chai. And she, he, he also worked uh, in the very interesting uh, medium that is a translation of 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 her his observation about uh, particularly about um, 
Phil uh, and, and Ghost. And so he also created um, a Ghost Festival in Bangkok a couple of years ago. And I was very um, interested in his creation. And he, he's an artist himself, but also creating this festival. And so he will talk about this uh, ghosts and spirits in our contemporary life. And then, I mean, I also invite Max Stewart, a renowned um, uh, choreographer from, from the US and who lives in Berlin already more than 20 years to here in Europe. Uh, in Belgium and in Berlin, and she has a company, dance company is called the Damaged Goods. Um, she is also a friend because I'm not an academic <laughs> kind of moderator, but I'm uh, I'm inviting my friends who, whose work I feel no, it's, very it's important. important. It's important to to talk, to listen, to create these fields. Uh, it changes um, us when we participate sometimes. You know, even when we speak, things become clearer to us uh, and it changes us to listen, to participate and to be part of it. And yeah. really, we are a bit over time, so I hope uh, uh, we don't keep you from oh. from sleeping, you know, uh, too, too, too much um, um, there. Yeah, okay. This was an yeah, no, important co contribution. Thank you. And there, are, of course, I'm doing uh, other projects and I'm also teaching. I'm doing, you know, like kind of uh, um, writing, writing, <laughs> writing to, for journals and so on. And, and yeah, keeping my routine here in the studio, keeping uh, us working and creating something and learning together. And so I'm very busy. I'm busy, like, yeah, I don't know, I'm very busy. Strangely, <laughs> busy. Uh, strangely quiet, strangely busy. And who knows, maybe one day at the Asia Society, we will see in seven years from an exhibition, you know, about oh, there the, is last, now. the Corona time and what you did and the traces and, uh, and who knows what. But now we are in the middle of it. And, um, and it is good to hear yeah. from you, you know. Yeah. Also in the Asian society, there is Asian society triennale. You can see also documentation of the work that I have done. Uh, in 2019, I have performed there. And now it is exhibited for the Asia society triennale. So if you have time, please come and visit the Asia society in New York. Yeah. Important. Uh, uh, communicates, and we all don't know enough about this gigantic big uh, territory of Asia, over 50 countries, uh, so diverse uh, from each other, yeah. so different. And we already know how Texas, how different it is from Florida, but just imagine uh, 50, over 50 countries, and we need to know more. We understand life better and do have some, some better questions but that we have and some answers you found and it's significant and we, we really can learn from that. So thank you really, really for, um, for being with us. And I hope to see you again uh, um, uh, one day when you're here in New York or one day I come and visit Indonesia. I now want to come and learn more and be there also yes. in person and see you dancing. We will have tomorrow, um, we will continue. We're gonna have Eva Mann from Switzerland together with Washington of Wanda from Nigeria. They are creating work together. They support each other. They come out of the, uh, and Catania's Lincoln's in the director's lab and they also show, you know, that we, you know, should do what also Melati has, we should create collaborations on smaller levels and they become bigger and actually a lot of small things are very big altogether and this is how, how um, change um, happens next week. Uh, we will be part of a conference we are organizing here, the students of the Graduate Center um, CUNY about the ideas of uh, professionals and amateur about work of expert and not the remedy uh, protocol will be um, part of it and uh, uh, and many many others and on Friday we have the great uh, Joe Melillo who uh, was the captain on the big boat of BAM for over 25 years uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music and I can't wait to hear from him what he thinks about this time which I'm sure he has never imagined he would uh, live through and uh, what it meant he left them shortly before and I think he's been such a great observer of the landscape of theater global theater also and of presenting we have all so many questions so it will be will be interesting thanks for how round uh, for hosting us again and um, we are deeply grateful and to you listeners for taking time out we know how much is out there how important also your time is 
and we need great artists, but we also need great audiences and we also need to listen. And so this is a big compliment that you joined us. And it is also important for Melati to know some people in New York, in Hungary and South Africa and uh, in Wilna, wherever people are listening from and they do actually that this is important and they will listen to what someone from, from Indonesia, from Bali or anywhere has to say. So. Um, solo as where you are so really thank you again thanks everybody have a good good weekend uh, we and uh, i hope you will get a good night's sleep and really thank you this was such a deep and meaningful conversation thank you Frank. have a nice day yeah thank you all my best and um i hope you all will join us again um, next week in milati please do stay in contact and let us know what you're doing bye bye yes Thank you. Bye-bye.